everyone, welcome back. Today's video is a first impressions on the newish Dior Dior Skin Nude Air Serum Foundation. I don't normally gravitate towards this kind of formulation, the volatile oil serum formulations, because I find that they can be quite unforgiving on dehydration, but I know that Jaclyn Hill is a fan of this one and she has dryish skin, so I have a little bit of hope. I've prepped the skin by moisturizing a lot, a lot, and now I'm going to douse myself in some MAC Fix Plus. Fix Plus has glycerin in it, so hopefully it will keep my base looking moist and hydrated. Now our bottle is a glass bottle, quite nice. It's one fluid ounce, which is pretty standard for a foundation, and we have a dropper delivery system. I'm not really sure how I feel about this. I think it's a little bit unhygienic pushing air into a foundation, but uh, it's better than that paddle thing that came with the YSL Fusion Foundation. Really don't like that. The price point for this foundation is 53 USD or 79 AUD. I'll build a bridge and I'll get over it. Now the consistency, if I can show you, is very runny. So as you can see, it's kind of rolling down my arm and it's kind of getting away from me. I actually have two shades, 010 and 020. I'm between shades. It's really irritating, but I was determined to do this video for you guys today. There is a shade in the US called 021 Linen. We don't have that in Australia, so I just had to make do. I'm going to put about two drops of both 010 and 020 on my hand. Make sure you shake these up. Sorry, forgot to mention that. I'm going to put two drops of each on my hand, so I'm getting about a 50-50 ratio, and hopefully that will be a good match for me. So just for the lols, I'm going to apply one half of my face with fingers and the other half with a beauty blender just to see how they compare. I haven't primed my skin because I wouldn't normally. So, you know, I'm doing what I would normally do. So let's do this. I feel this setting rather quickly. So I imagine you have to move quite quickly. Oh. I'm gonna do a light layer all over my face just so that you guys can probably see what's going on. And as you can see, I have some marks on my forehead. I had this really sore rash. It was really strange. So my skin isn't great today, but I guess it's a good day to trial a new foundation, see how it covers. So that is one light layer over this half of my face. And so far, so good. I think that I'm getting about a sheer to a medium coverage. I can still see this spot on my forehead, the bane of my existence but a lot of the redness on my cheeks and around my nose has been covered. I'm going to do one more light thin layer and see how it builds. That's another thin layer on this half of my face and I've built to a pretty solid medium coverage. I don't know if you could get to an absolute full coverage with this foundation because it is on the lighter side. It did build very well though. For the other half of my face, I'm going to use my Beauty Blender. Unfortunately, the product has set on the back of my hand so I'm going to dispense a little bit more and let's try swiping it on just so that my beauty blender doesn't eat all the product. Has anyone tried this foundation? I'd be curious to know what you think and what skin type you have. Leave your comments down below so that you can help everyone out. I do understand why these foundations are becoming very popular. It is very second skin. It feels very light on the face. I just think they haven't quite perfected the formula for dry patches or dehydration, but I have high hopes for this one. In terms of application, if you're looking to build coverage, I say use your fingers. If you're looking to inject a little bit more moisture into the foundation, do try the Beauty Blender. It just takes a little bit more building. The finish right after application is actually quite luminous. I have a little bit of a natural shine going on and I'm not sure if that's the foundation itself or the fact that I doused myself in MAC Fix Plus, but um, I really like it. Have you, guys, have you guys noticed that? Australians do that uh, at the end of each sentence. Uh, I really like it. I never noticed that until I saw her on Ellen the other day. My mind is blown. For my sensitive noses out there, I have you covered. Let's smell this. It has a typical floral Dior fragrance. It's quite strong, so if you have super sensitive skin or a super sensitive nose, um, this could possibly offend. Offend? <gasps> Uh, in terms of foundation, the application was super easy. I think that's one of the selling points for this kind of formula. It just glides on, super easy to blend, takes about three minutes to apply. I'm gonna take a closer look in the mirror now and tell you 
what's going on around my nose and in my pores. I'm noticing a little bit of creasing around the crevice of my nose. The foundation hasn't done much to cover these sort of red spots that I had on my forehead. I'll need to go in and conceal that. I'm getting a little bit of actually like settling in my life lines, which I don't often experience. So that's a bit interesting. It's not the kindest to my pores on my nose, but it doesn't look horrible by any stretch. It's looking rather nice right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some under eye concealer. Uh, this is just my LS Fast. It's a good one for every day. Good one for sheer foundation days. I'll also quickly conceal those uh, few little spots on my forehead. I'm using my Kevin Aquan Central Skin Enhancer and a new brush. You guys recommended this to me. It's the Laura Mercier Smoky Eyeliner Brush. Actually, that brush is beautiful for spot concealing. I would totally recommend it. Thank you to all of you that um, went out of your way to make some recommendations for me. You guys are so sweet. Okay, the last thing that we have to check for is flashback. This foundation does have an SPF of 25, so let's do that flash test right now. I am looking awfully shiny in those photos, so I will set the T-zone very lightly with some translucent powder, which is what I would do on any normal day anyway. Immediately, I prefer the way that looks. I'm telling you, this powder just makes every foundation better. Okay, currently it is 12.35. Oh! Let me change my screensaver. <laughs> totally inappropriate for the internet. <laughs> okay, I changed my screensaver. Can you see what it is? It's a nude air that's so appropriate for this. Anyway, it was just a photo I uploaded on Instagram. It is now 12.38. I will check back in a few hours and I'll let you know how this is holding up. <coughs> I'm back. Guys, I've had such an active day today. And by active, I mean actively swatching. <laughs> Um, grumble, grumble, what a hard life I live. Uh, this is more makeup than last time we spoke. This makeup is in fact a blog post. I will link it somewhere on the screen if it is up already, which it should be. It is currently 7.04, so six and a half hours since uh, we last spoke. I might have developed a little bit of sheen in the T-zone, nothing crazy. I have a normal skin type, so if you're oilier, you might have a different experience. I don't think that the foundation oxidized, which is a great thing. It makes matching much easier. I did apply some bronzer and highlight and I've found that the foundation is holding onto that really well. I haven't noticed any fading. On that note, can you see this highlight? I'm sure that you can because the satellites above Earth can detect this highlight. It is fabulous. MAC Soft and Gentle, by the way. My only real issue with this foundation is that it emphasizes the pores around my nose and I don't have particularly enlarged pores. If you do have visible pores right across the cheek, I think that it will really draw attention to that. Um, I should probably get a hand mirror, can't be bothered. I'm a little bit flaky around the crevice of the nose, but that's kind of a typical problem that I always struggle with. Overall, it does look nice at the six and a half hour mark. I will report back once more in a few more hours so that I can give you my final verdict. But right now, I've got to go and have some dinner. I'll see you in a bit. So, plot twist. Adrian came home from work and he was like, let's go clubbing. And I was like, let's go clubbing. So off we went. It is now 4.30 in the morning and I'm reporting back on this Dior foundation because clearly I am committed. If we're being honest, I'm looking a little bit worse for wear. I'm probably a bit oily in the T-zone, but it's been 14 hours and my foundation is intact. I haven't noticed any severe migration or fading. I think that's pretty friggin' good. So thumbs up on the longevity front. As you guys saw earlier on this never ending day, I did prep my skin really well for this foundation, but ultimately, it is demi matte in finish and I think it would be best suited to a combination skin type as opposed to my normal to dry skin type. I think I preferred the way it looked about six hours after application when my natural oils had started to break through. It's disgusting, but this is real life. <laughs> so all in all, 
I would recommend this foundation to a combination skin type that has relatively even skin texture. In terms of coverage, it's so versatile. You can build from a really sheer coverage to a fuller medium. I would say steer clear of this foundation if you have a dry skin type, if you have sensitivity to alcohol in foundation formulations, this is quite alcohol heavy. If you have a significant amount of skin texture, whether that be uh, flaky patches, lumps and bumps, or even acne. Finally, if you are seeking a true full coverage foundation, you should probably give this a skip. That's not really what it's about. Out of five, I give the Dior, Dior Skin Nude Air Serum Foundation a 3.5 out of five. It's not a makeup-y, super perfected foundation, which I personally love. Going forward, I'll probably use a hydrating primer or a smoothing primer to address those textual issues that I had in the central portions of my face. I feel like I've covered it all, but potentially I've forgotten something. So I will add a little summary in the description box. Let me know what foundation you'd like to see next on my first impressions segment. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will speak to you all very soon. Good night.